Oliver Miller Sr. gets ready to go on trial for allegedly murdering a local community leader. A Mideast peace agreement is causing turmoil tonight in the West Bank. And Jews around the world celebrate the new year. Hello, I'm Jim Douglas. And I'm Sabrina Smith. Texas News 5 is next. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Tomorrow, a Fort Worth jury will start hearing testimony in the murder of Oliver, trial of Oliver Miller Sr. Miller is accused of killing Emmett Allen, a well-known leader in Fort Worth's African-American community. Texas News 5's Heather McKenzie joins us for the newsroom with more on that. Heather? Well, Jim and Sabrina, it was a murder that rocked Fort Worth, and the shock only grew in the stunning way the suspect, Oliver Miller Sr., turned himself in. Sir, did you kill him? Yes, ma'am. Why? Why? Because he uh, stole some property from me. Oliver Miller walked into a local television station August 12, 1994, and confessed to the murder of Emmett Peter Allen. At that particular time, I just snapped. You know, you just, I just snapped. I guess the person just got to me. Miller claimed Allen was trying to steal property from him. But Miller's bizarre confession was only one twist in a complex case. It turns out Miller's son is a professional basketball player. And the victim, Pete Allen, was a respected community leader. More than a realtor, Allen was the kind of man who appeared on television supporting Fort Worth's anti-gang plan. Ironically, one week later, Mayor Kay Granger was speaking at his funeral. Now, more than a year later, in the neighborhood where both men live just six houses apart, people still talk about the tragedy. He's a nice guy. Oliver Miller is a nice guy. It's just real sad. Because Peter, he was a real nice guy, and Mr. Miller was too. According to Miller's attorney, Miller is pleading not guilty to the crime, and the insanity defense is likely to be used. Miller's in the Tarrant County Jail now. He was ruled incompetent by a state psychiatrist last April. With a community leader dead, a beloved neighbor with a troubled mind apparently responsible, the people here feel nothing but sadness for all involved. I wasn't shocked that he confessed because that's the kind of person he is. You know, I think that he confessed because he didn't want to do no running. Now, I spoke with Jack Strickland. That's Oliver Miller's attorney tonight. And he told me in a case like this, there are never any winners. He said Emmett Allen's family is devastated. And likewise, Oliver Miller's family is destroyed. It is a tragedy all the way around. Back to you. And we'll have more on the trial tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks a lot, Heather. Mm -hmm. Los Angeles residents are calling the death of a three-year-old girl a tragedy, too. Friends gathered today for a memorial service for little Stephanie Kuhn. She died from a gunshot wound to the head after gang members fired on her family's car. The family made a wrong turn into a dead-end alley, and the gang attacked. Three suspects have been arrested so far. A teenager in France went on a shooting rampage today and killed 12 people. The teen first murdered his parents and brother in their home in southern France. Then he walked into the next village and opened fire on the town square, killing eight more people before turning the gun on himself. The murder-suicide is the country's worst multiple killing since 1989. A big breakthrough in Mideast peace talks tonight as negotiators a deal for the withdrawal of Israeli troops from key areas of the West Bank. The agreement follows two years of tough negotiations and a week of all-night bargaining. It will lead to what is my and my government goal to solve the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, the longest, the most loaded with hatred, prejudices, and bloodshed. PLO leader Yasser Arafat wished Israel a happy new year, which Jews celebrate tonight, but the news of the agreement triggered anything but celebration in the West Bank. Palestinians eager for Israeli troops to leave the West Bank town of Hebron clashed with soldiers there. A young Palestinian was killed. Jewish settlers in Hebron don't like the agreement either. They feel like their government we sold them out. We should not give in to terrorists. Our government does, we not. And our government, with God's help, will fall. And I hope as soon as possible. President Clinton praised the agreement. He will host a ceremonial signing at the White House on Thursday. While peace took a step forward in the Mideast, it took a large step back in Bosnia. Today, the Bosnian government announced a boycott talks this week on a U.S. peace plan. Bosnian Rio says he was ordered to stay away because of the lack of progress on certain issues in the proposed peace plan. Bosnia-Herzegovina must be a state 
uh, a source of stability, not to instability. The plan calls for splitting Bosnia in half between the Serbs and the Muslim Croat Confederation. Texas Senator and presidential candidate Phil Graham was on the campaign trail again today, this time in St. Louis. During the campaign stop, the senator once again reaffirmed his pledge that he would reduce the federal deficit during his first term in office or else he will not seek re-election. Graham says one way he would reduce the deficit is to cut spending while making big tax cuts. Several other Republican candidates have said they would do the same thing. Former Governor Ann Richards is recovering tonight from surgery to repair her broken hand. Richards had planned to be in Dallas today for the 1995 Topaz Awards and Scholarship Luncheon. The group Women in Film Dallas...